Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Solo React Talk. Tonight, I am going to be reacting to a video requested by uh, Jacqueline Hernandez. It's called Geography Now Philippines, made by the Geography Now YouTube channel. Um, I have reacted to at least one video from Geography Now. It was centered around Kazakhstan, if I'm not mistaken. So yeah, this is the second video. And if you guys want to check that one out, remember the playlist card is going to be at the top here. Just click on it and you'll be able to access it. If you want to check out the original video as well as Geography Now's YouTube channel, the links are going to be in the description below. Okay, let's start. Three, two, one, go. If you don't know anything about Asia, the Philippines is like the jolliest of them all. They're just happy, fun, jolly people. Hey, and you know what? It's been three years. I'm not taking this anymore. I've been pushed around, I've been threatened, I've been thrown in the dungeon, I've been the butt of all the jokes. I'm the Filipino one. This is my time. My time! Ah! Chill, bro. Chill. Okay, it's your time. <laughs> okay, woo. <coughs> Welcome to the Philippines. My turn. Okay. It's time to learn geography now! Hey everyone, I'm Ken, and as you know, I'm half Filipino. Years ago, I was looking for a job and I saw this ad asking for a motion graphics animator on Craigslist. Paul and I literally met up at a Jollibee for my- Jollibee. Yes, I have seen this restaurant chain. Well, not in my country, you know, but on YouTube. You know, many YouTubers uh, that I follow uh, you know, some of them, they talk about this restaurant chain and yeah, it, I've, what, what is it? Is it like KFC, McDonald's combined together or something else? Yeah. Um, but I know it's famous. It's really, really famous in the Philippines. I'm, I'm not sure if that's where the franchise was created. I'm not entirely sure about that, but I know I've seen that logo, you know, the B and uh, 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 the restaurants, you know, especially in the Philippines. Yeah. He said I was his top three candidates. In reality, there were only three candidates that applied. So technically I didn't lie, but yeah, the other two people kind of sucked. So yeah. Oh, and back then I had this weird mustache and Paul's hair was basically this thing. Ken and I have been talking for a long time and we agreed Ken definitely has to be in this episode. You've come so far from that Craigslist Jollibee interview. You've earned this. Thanks. Handana Maximula. The Philippines is an interesting country because there's sort of a dichotomy between labels. If you ask a Filipino if they consider themselves Asian or Pacific Islanders, you might get contrasting answers. What do you consider yourself, Ken? Eh, I always thought Pacific Islanders sounded kind of cool, so I usually stuck with that. Ah. So first of all, the Philippines is a tropical archipelago of over 7,000 islands, about 2,000 of which are inhabited, and it is the... 7,000 islands, 2,000 inhabited. Whoa. Oh. How does the central government control such territories? You know, 2,000 inhabited islands, 7,000 islands in their domain. How do you protect such a vast, you know, and almost complicated territory of land mass and even ocean? There must be like serious pressure on the Philippines uh, from their neighboring countries, you know, uh, especially China. Yeah, especially uh, with that um, disputed territorial waters uh, that, you know, covers the Philippines, China, Taiwan, uh, who else? Malaysia, uh, Indonesia and another country. I'm not entirely sure which one, but yeah, there's a region of the ocean where you know there's a lot of countries disputing who owns what <laughs> and the philippines is part of that mess as well so yeah you know here they are having seven thousand islands and inhabiting two thousand of them oh amazing 
largest island nation without any land borders or shared island territory with another nation. The country is located in Southeast Asia, straddling the Philippine Sea in the north, the South China Sea in the west, and the Sulu and Celebes Sea in the south. Just to skip away lies the island of Borneo, which is split amongst three nations at the closest point only about 22 miles or 40 kilometers away from the nearest island that belongs to the Philippines. Now in general, many people will refer to one of the three main island cluster regions that people are a part of. There are Luzon in the north, where you can find the capital Manila and where the half of the population lives, Visaya in the center, and Mindanao in the south. Otherwise, the nation is made up of 17 regions, one of which is autonomous, the Bangsamoro Autonomous Region of Muslim Mindanao. This place has a high level of self-rule and autonomy appointed by the government. We'll explain more about this later. If autonomy and self-rule. Uh, is that municipal level and then provincial level? That's as far as they go, but then when it comes to national uh, executive decisions, it still, you know, affects them or are they totally autonomous in that respect as well, where the national government can't really, you know, tell them that, you know, these are the new laws that have come into uh, place and it will affect the entire nation. That includes you as well. I I'm not entirely sure about, you know, the, the level of autonomy these uh, autonomous uh you know parts of the philippines have exactly yeah but that's interesting hmm. why are they autonomous though if you want to be absolutely technical, Quezon City, a bit north of Manila, is the largest city in the Philippines. However, the surrounding 16 towns and cities by Manila are called Manila Metro, or the National Capital Region, and they basically act as one unit. Otherwise, the largest city outside of the NCR are Davao City in Mindanao and Cebu in the Visayas. Manila has the largest and busiest airport, Ninoy Aquino International Airport, which is basically the hub that services the entire NCR. They also have the busiest shipping port at the Port of Manila. Otherwise, the second largest airport is Cebu Mactan International, and rounding out for third place is Davao City Francisco Bangoy International. In terms of land transport though, the Philippines is well connected amongst the islands. In fact, the longest highway is the Pan-Philippine Highway that stretches about 3,500 kilometers across the country and connects Luzon, Samar, Liet, and Mindanao with underground tunnels connecting them. This, this is good. This is very good. The fact that they have infrastructure, road infrastructure, not necessarily with the with the airports. Airports are important too, but you know, road infrastructure that connects the various uh, parts of the archipelago, you know, islands together. That's very important, uh, not only for economic basis, but also for a social uh, connection with uh, people from the north all the way to the south, uh, the east and the west of the nation as well. It's very, very important to have that type of infrastructure. And maybe that's also how they're able to solidify, uh, you know, national government's authority over the entire 7,000 islands and only 2,000 inhabited islands. Yeah, I can see that being as a very effective tool in unifying the nation. The fact that they have infrastructure that uh, crisscrosses the entire nation like that. Yeah, good. Finally, the Philippines has only two territorial disputes, the state of Sabah in Malaysia on North Borneo. The territory once had been part of the Sultanate of Sulu, a Muslim state that existed the 15th century to the 20th century, and that's a whole other story. As for the other dispute, as we mentioned quite a few times already, this whole area known as the Spratly Islands is- Yes, this, <laughs> this, this, definitely. Um, yeah, Vietnam, China, Taiwan, the Philippines, Malaysia, um Indo I'm thinking Indonesia, I'm not entirely sure. Uh but also Brunei is also having some disputes there as well. Yeah, this entire place it's a mess. It's a political hot potato. You know, militarily and uh, economically it's very explosive. Maybe not exploding in people's faces just yet, but who knows in the future what you know china might do because they are the the ones who are trying to gobble up as much territory as possible in uh, the spratly islands yeah so really this is a hot potato right here 
is a complete mess. If you don't know anything about this place, it basically goes like this. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. This is the map showing what everyone claims in the area. This big one right here is China's. Like, yeah, they just kind of pretty much went for all of it. This has even led to a few skirmishes between nations that have built patrol stations on the island. And when they spot a ship that gets too close, things can get kind of ugly. It's kind of like uh, this. Hey, 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 what are you doing? This is my area. I'm just doing some fishing and research here, you know? Why do you have a shovel then? Are you b building something? Or? Well, technically there's no land protruding from this reef, so uh, there's no land claim. So you're just gonna build your own land? For research. Anyway! Research. Here are some notable spots of interest. Fort Santiago. Magellan's Cross. San Agustin Church. Sagada Hanging Coffins. Aguila Hanging coffins? Okay. What's that about? Ando Shrine. Cebu's Philippine Taoist Temple. Shrine of Mama Mary in Tagaytay. The Lapu Lapu Shrine. Luneta Park. MacArthur Landing Site. Bunawi Rice Terraces. The Malacanang Palace. Vigan has many historical and colonial buildings. The various national museums of history and arts. Tons of amusement parks. And that's not even including all the natural wonders of the Philippines. They have an underground river. The most amazing, beautiful beaches in the universe. Hills that look like lumps of chocolate. And there's an island in a lake, in an island in a lake in an island huh. we should hang that is cool that is really cool um yeah many of those images went so fast i'll have to come back to them but yeah what i've seen so far really the philippines is a diverse you know country with a lot of uh different types of biospheres if i can say you know uh, we saw some beaches there, we saw some hills that looked like an alien world, really. It looked like from another planet. Uh, yeah, that was quite interesting. And of course the museums and the cities that were also being shown here. Uh, very, very uh, touristy-like as well, like you could just visit and take pictures and just enjoy yourself there. Yeah, it's cool. Out sometime. Yeah, when you have 7,000 tropical islands on a volcanic archipelago, chances are things can get pretty crazy landscape-wise. Which brings us to... The actual physical land of the Philippines is the biggest treasure you will find here for sure. Anyway, the Philippines lies on the Ring of Fire and is specifically on a tectonic plate named after them, the Philippine Plate. And about 95% of the land is made up of the 11 largest islands. The country was essentially formed through the tectonic activity between the Philippines, Manila, and the Mindanao Trenches, the Mindanao being the second deepest in the world. This makes the country susceptible to small earthquakes and minor volcanic activity. About 53 active volcanoes can be found in all of these largest islands, except for Palawan. The most 53 volcanoes, active volcanoes, 53. Hey. Famous and picturesque of these include these three. See this island here, Kamiguin? It actually has more volcanoes than towns on it. Seven versus five, making it the place with the most number of volcanoes per square kilometer in the world. In fact, the tallest peak in the Philippines is a potentially active volcano, Mount Apo, located in the South Mindanao area. The country has numerous mountain ranges and highlands that dip into the fertile valleys, the largest range being the Cordillera Range in the North Luzon area, hooking into the Sierra Madre Range on the east side, which feeds the longest river of the country, the Cagayan, that flows into the Cagayan Valley. This valley, along with the central Luzon Valley, are the largest arable croplands and produce nearly all of the rice in the Philippines. The Bisayas are known for growing the most sugarcane, whereas Mindanao specializes heavy in coconut and fruit production. Back in Luzon, though, you can find the largest lake in the country, Lake Laguna Dabay, which is actually in the caldera of a dormant volcano. The lake has a weird detached island called Talim and is actually drained by the Pasig River that flows through the capital, Manila. And finally, the country is the heart of typhoon territory. They can come at almost any time of the year. The nation will experience on average about 20 of the turbulent storms annually, which often flood to their many river systems. But yeah, if anything, Filipinos are the most cyclone-adapted people on Earth. They're used to it. The water has always been kind of their thing. Swimming, sailing, fishing. Just not exactly quite diving into it. Otherwise, the Philippines is one of the 17 mega-diverse nations on Earth. They actually have the largest level of marine biodiversity in the world within their waters and the highest rate of animal discovery on the planet with 16 new mammal species that were discovered in the past decade alone. They have everything from the longest snake in the world, the reticulated python, the largest fish in the world, whale sharks, seven of the eight known species of giant clam are found in the Philippines, the world's smallest hoofed animal. Oh, it's so cute. <laughs> oh, look, guys, now this thing is cute. Oh, my lord. What is it called? Pilandok. Pilandok. Mouse deer. Oh, man. Oh, it's just. 
cute you just want to pick it up <laughs> oh wow look at those short stumpy legs uh, it's cute the Philippine mouse deer and their national bird is the largest eagle in the world. Economically speaking, the Philippines is considered a newly industrialized nation. It is transitioning out of becoming an agricultural based system to a service and manufacturing based one. They have like three of the top 10 largest malls on earth. Ooh, just you wait, I'm taking the top spot soon. They're one of the fastest growing economies in Asia, and as the 34th largest economy in the world, their GDP purchasing power parity has surpassed the $2 trillion mark. Basically, the Philippines is definitely becoming a key power player in the world stage. It's like, <laughs> we're, we're so rich! <laughs> uh, the four Asian tigers, oh, okay, and then the Philippines. You know, you don't have to compete with those tiger nations. You know, think, think far larger than them. Surpass them. You know, think of yourself as one of the top five economic nations on the planet. It's possible. It's possible. You know, don't don't settle yourself for the four Asian tigers. Nah, 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 nah. Go higher than that. Reach for the stars. Someday. For what it's worth though, mining, fishing, and agriculture are strong industries as well. They are currently the world's largest nickel and abaca or manila hemp producers and the second largest coconut producer after Indonesia. Tourism though is another important industry taking up about 8% of their GDP, employing over 3 million people. And now, Food! Now in the Philippines, every region has their own specialty and culinary strange. Yeah, every dish looks like a fairy exploded. Lots of dishes you could eat kumakai and kamai, or eat with your hands. Yeah, pretty much everything has rice, and then you're gonna get a lot of grease and salt and vinegar, and a lot of like, I don't care if that looks like it goes there or not, I'm still gonna eat it anyway. Right, Ken? Yeah, that's yeah. Filipino food. Yeah. There's really no official national dish, but three meals that are well known for are adobo, lumpia, and sinigang. And in the non-Muslim parts, lechon is a huge deal. They're all Oh, did you see that pig? <laughs> oh, it's been roasted there. Ooh. Also dishes like Tagalog steak, tinola, pancit luglug, kare kare, sigstig, tapsilog, balut, kinilaw, and my favorite Filipino dish, palabok! Just put some nice little lemon juice on it. I actually got this at Jollibee. If you don't know what Jollibee is, it's like the most popular fast food chain in the Philippines. It's like if McDonald's and KFC adopted a Filipino baby and they even added spaghetti to their menu for some reason. Otherwise, Filipinos are dessert experts. They love and you know Jollibee, that mascot, the, the, the bee, right? Yes, I've seen a TikTok video <laughs> of, of someone dancing in a Jollibee, you know, uh, um, costume. It was so funny. It was really, really funny. Um, and that's why, I'm, you know, I remember this franchise. I remember this food chain store, uh, uh, Jollibee. And definitely, it's, it's really, really something interesting. Hmm, okay. I love their ube. Ube everything. Ube ice cream. Ube bread. Ube pie. Ube cakes. Oh, they also have like. Oh, yes, please. Give me the cake. Oh, that looked delicious and was purple in color. Oh, yes, please. Give me that cake. <laughs> Sapin, sapin, and cassava cakes. Those are the best desserts, in my opinion. They also have halo halo, leche flan, turon, bukok, pandan, and puto. What you call me? If you're either Latin American or Spanish, you may notice some of those foods are also found in Latin cuisine. Look, look, you can't be eating in front of us like this. It's not fair. It's not right. You know, here you are, you're enjoying your food, and we are here just watching you eat. Nah, no, man. You have to give us that food too, <laughs> so we can taste. It's not fair. It's not fair at all. And there's a reason for that. <laughs> yeah, let's, we'll explain that in... Now, only in the Philippines can you find people that have Spanish names, speak English, celebrate an Austronesian culture, and cook Chinese. General MacArthur once said, Give me a thousand Filipino soldiers, and I will conquer the world. Yeah, for some reason, Filipinos are like the best friends of Asia. Filipinos still have the best attitudes and smiles. They even give time off felony sentences if the prisoners volunteer to take part in a Michael Jackson dance performance to the public. What? Really? Wow. Uh, but we're getting ahead of ourselves. First, the graph. The country is about 110 million people and is the 8th most populated country in Asia and the 12th most populated country in the world. There are about 175 ethno-linguistic people groups in the Philippines, the majority of whose languages are Austronesian. Of these groups, the largest ones are the Tagalog at about 28%, 13% are Cebuano, 9% are Ilocano, and 8% are Bisaya. The rest are made up of other groups plus a small minority of non-native citizens, mostly Asians and Americans. It's important to note though that the Philippines has about 10.2 
2 million people overseas worldwide. It is one of the largest diaspora populations spanning over 100 countries. The US alone has about 4 million. I mean, they were at one point colonized by the US, so go figure. They use the Filipino peso as their currency, they use the types A, B, and C plug outlets, and they drive on the right side of the road. Oh! Why are so many Filipino uh, citizens working abroad? I mean, that's a lot of people going abroad to work. That is a lot of people. Um, yeah, I, I'm wondering, is it because of the economy? It's not big enough to, uh, you know, service and to employ, you know, all those people who are leaving off for America or wherever else in the world. Uh, because, you know, that's the type of workforce that you'd want to keep in your country and, you know, have them work uh, in your factories, in your small, mid medium sized or large businesses, you know, uh, yeah, that, that's, that's a lot of people. That is a lot of people. And keep in mind, the word Pinoy is synonymous with something that is Filipino. You might see that used a lot. Now back to the ethnic groups thing. Since there are over 175 of them, you would think, how do they all communicate? Well, the Philippines has two official languages. English, which makes them the fifth most English-speaking nation on Earth, and Filipino, which is the standardized version of Tagalog. The Philippine Tagalog language spoken today is a very different from pure Tagalog. It actually has about 14% Spanish, 10% Malay, and 7% English mixed into it with a slew of other borrowed loan words. You can see the influence in words like like pintelador, guapo, zapatos, and familia. Often, Filipinos will substitute an F with a P. Or a V with a B. Or a V with a B. Yeah, same with Koreans, actually. Yeah. <laughs> High five with minimal consonants. Yay! <laughs> oh, and fun fact, Ken taught me this. Uh, in Tagalog, you can actually say an entire conversation just using the syllable ba. For example, ba, ba, ba. Ba, 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 ba. Well, that was fun. Otherwise, in the Visayas and Mindanao area, Cebuano is a common language, as well as the other regional tongues like Waray and Daboano. They even have the only Spanish-based Creole in Asia, Chavacano, located in Zaboanga City. Now, the Philippines is unique in that over a past few centuries, they've gone through three periods that shape their identity. Before European intervention, the Philippines has had a multitude of early civilizations that built kingdoms and dynasties like the Tondo, the Namayan, the Pangasinan, and the Sulu Sultanate. Many of these kingdoms had their own indigenous writing system, such as the Babayan, Buhid, Eskayan, and Kulitan. Genetically, Filipinos are classified as belonging to the broader Austronesian people group, with their closest cousins being the Micronesians, like the Mariana Islanders, Guam, and Palau. Although over the years, many people have mixed, and today it is speculated that somewhere around one-fifth or more of the population may have some kind of Chinese ancestry. After the Spanish came in, they adopted many of the customs, traditions, and cultural traits which have Spanish roots. Their own country is named after Spanish King Philip. The biggest trait, though, would be the fact that they are predominantly Catholic, at about 81% of the population adhering to the faith. The rest are mostly Protestant, with a small Muslim minority in the South Mindanao area. The Philippines is the largest Christian nation in Asia, fifth largest Christian nation on Earth, and third largest Catholic nation after Brazil and Mexico. They have so many holidays and festivals devoted to Catholic themes, like All Saints Day, Holy Week, and Easter, and of course, the largest one, Christmas. The Philippines has the longest Christmas season out of anywhere else on Earth. Okay, so now we're just gonna rapid fire a list of 12 fun cultural facts for the Philippines. Filipinos have a ton of superstitions. For example, whistling at night will turn you into a werewolf. For formal What? <laughs> That's interesting. <laughs> How did that come about? How did that come about? You start whistling during the night and you turn into a werewolf. <laughs> Ah, okay, okay. Occasions you may see Filipinos wearing traditional barongs for men and Oh, very nice, very nice. Maria Clara or Mestiza dresses for women. There are many other traditional costumes and customs for the other 170 ethnic groups. Too many to cover, but it goes everywhere from feathers, coconut fibers, hair dresses, tribal tattoos, and so on. Speaking of which, the Philippines dominates major international beauty pageants with a grand total of 15 victories at the Miss Universe, Miss World, Miss International, and Miss Earth competitions. Basketball and boxing are the most popular popular sport by far. They have the oldest basketball league in Asia and the second oldest in the world after the United States. And come on, we all know Pacquiao. The Philippines Yes, yes. 
Act is the leading nation to train and export nurses abroad. It's been said at one point, every Filipino has their should I just drop everything and become a nurse moment in their life crisis. That's a fact. <laughs> <laughs> I've had those. And the word balikbayan means returner or returning family. It is used when someone comes back from expat work abroad. You might hear the honorific title of po or opal for elders, and a lot of people often raise the backs of the hands of their elders to their forehead as a sign of respect and say bless. In the oh, that's nice. That's very respectable. Yes, I like that, actually. Philippines, you have your name, and you have your Pinoy nickname, and they get really weird and creative. Pepsi. Oh, kind of like, uh, you know, Thai people. They have their, you know, Thai family names that, you know, that have been given to them, and then they also have their nicknames uh, due to reasons. You know, maybe the name, the original name or the first name is too long, to be pronounced or it's too complicated and then you know they just have a shorter version name for themselves yeah their nickname so it's kind of similar here too huh bing bong jelly boy pinky bum bum and earl every filipino on every island in every region can tell you filipinos are obsessed with karaoke the first karaoke machine was actually patented by a filipino roberto del rosario even though some japanese dude invented it but he patented it obviously that means music is a big deal in the philippines besides taking modern cues from american pop they also have traditional style instruments include things like gudyapi kilitang gimbal kubing and togali in addition there are many different styles of dance but the most famous one considered the national dance is is tinikling, a dance done between two pairs of perpendicular bamboo poles that are clapped together as percussion tools and the dancers must weave their feet in and out in the spaces before getting hit or tripped. Now Imagine the type of focus that is required to do something like that. Uh, or maybe you shouldn't be, you know, so focused on dancing and making sure that you're not caught by the poles, you know. Uh, you just have to go with the flow. You just have to trust in your instincts as you dance. Uh, with other people around you as well, you know, and hearing the rhythm of the beat and just enjoying yourself. Yeah, don't don't focus too much because that's how you'll make mistakes. So you just go with the flow, you just dance with the beat and you'll make it. Yeah, that, that's, that, that was really looking very difficult to do, you know. Uh, maybe, you know, you have to start dancing like this, like at a very young age. I don't know if people in their 30s or in their 20s or uh, their 40s, you know, they just start and then they can already do it. I think you have to start from a very young age. So you get used to it and then, you know, it's just, it just becomes natural to you. Yeah, but that's cool. Wow. Now, on a bit of a more objective note, we do have to talk about some of the controversies. The Philippines is beautiful, but if you've been keeping up with current events, they do have their fair share of issues that have made headlines. We don't yeah, all countries have their issues. No country is perfect. Um, I know there'll be some people who say, oh, my country is beautiful. You know, we're perfect. We, we have this, we have that. No, no. All countries have their issues. Sugarcoat everything here. Human trafficking, whether in the sex industry, slavery, or organ smuggling, has been a problem in certain areas. And even though anti trafficking acts have been passed by the government, enforcement has not always been on par. The drug trade has also been a major inconvenience for decades, affecting millions of people in the country. This has led to the new controversial laws instituted by President Duarte, which encouraged the public to seek bounty in exchange for hunting down drug pushers. Many have died in the process. And finally, you have the Moro conflict, an insurgency in the predominantly Muslim Mindanao region, which sought to take parts of eastern Malaysia and break away through conflict. The fight has been going on for nearly half a century and now it's just ending at the turn of the 21st century. Yeah, kind, kind of. of. For what it's worth though, in the Philippines, everyone is family at the end. You don't have to be related to anyone to call someone ate or kuya. There's even a word, bayanihan, which means something like helping one another through community spirit without expecting anything in return. In any case, we gotta finish off this segment with history. Austronesians. Tribal kingdoms and sultanates. This guy came to the islands. Catholicism comes in. Lapu-Lapu and Magellan dies in battle. Five Spanish dudes followed through. They finally become a colony of Spain. The Galleon Trade. British Philippines. And then back to Spain. The Treaty of Paris. Philippine Revolution. The Spanish-American War. First Philippine Republic. Philippine-American War. American Occupation. World War II, Japan invades. American pushes them back. Finally, Philippine Independence. Ferdinand Marcos turned from president to dictator. Martial law. This guy gets killed because he was against the regime. People Power Revolution in 1986. Growth from agricultural society to an industrial one. And here we are today. And now... Uh, that was too fast. <laughs> that was too fast. That was. Too, I need it. I need it in details, you know. But 
I, I think I'll get that in a different video. Yeah, if you guys have any suggestions, you can send them in the comment section and I'll get to them. Um, yeah. We finish off with the notable famous people condensed. Some famous people you guys, the Pinoy geography suggested we mention in this episode include Lapu Lapu, Jose Rizal, these two saints, Melcora Aquino, Manuel L. Quezon, La Candula, Josefa Yanes Escoda, and Vicente Lim, Carlos Peña Romulo, and all the Miss Universe winners. And there's a ton of Americans with Filipino or partial Filipino descent. Bruno Mars? Wow, okay. Wait, wait, let's go back a bit. I need to see. Who else is there? Uh, oh, Batista. All right. What? Enrique? What? Uh, I cannot pronounce his name, but I, I've seen him before. Um, Alp the App. Yeah, I've seen him in... What was that group called again? I forgot what they were called. Ah, uh, how can I forget their name? Uh, okay, guys, but I, I, I've seen it before. I've seen that guy before. Um, Vanessa Hutchins. What? Wow. All right, all right. Yasmin tries. I don't know you, Yasmin. I'm sorry. But everybody else, I know you guys. Wow. And there's a ton of Americans with Filipino or partial Filipino descent. Yeah, you can see there's lots of American Filipinos. Those two get along pretty tight. We'll explain more on how that happened in... in... Because of the long history in the Philippines being colonized by two major Western powerhouses, it would make sense that it would have ties with the... The Black Eyed Peas, right? That's the name of the group that he belongs to. The Black Eyed Peas. Yes. <laughs> Sorry, guys outside world in many different ways. For friends, the Philippines is generally close with all the ASEAN nations and does great business with them, particularly Indonesia and Malaysia, their closest neighbors. The Marshall Islands, Palau, and the federal states of Micronesia are all cousin countries, many of which have Filipino migrants in them. And they all share the same history of being former US territories and US influenced states. Of course, Spain will always be in the back of their minds as the former colonizer that they gained much influence from. Although Filipinos are not considered Latino, the Spanish and many Latin Americans kind of see them as like the adopted Asians that totally fit in their family. It's like, come on, you're Catholic, you eat flan, every fifth word you speak is Spanish, you're basically one of us. Interestingly enough, the relationship with Mexico has historically been always strong. The Philippines was ruled under a Mexico-based vice royalty of New Spain. The Manila Galleons were Spanish trading ships, which for two and a half centuries linked the Philippines with Mexico across the Pacific Ocean, making one or two round trip voyages per year between the ports of Acapulco and Manila. And Mexican traditions were brought in like the Day of the Dead and Champorado. When it comes to their best friends, however, most Filipinos would probably say, even though colonial years were a little bit bumpy, ultimately the USA and South Korea. South Korea was one of their closest best friends from the 20th century on. World War II really bonded with them after the Japanese occupation years, and they supported each other diplomatically. Koreans are the top number one tourist demographic that visit the Philippines. Koreans kind of admire the fact that even though they were both influenced by the US, Filipinos speak better English, whereas Filipinos practically obsess over Korean products and media. Ah, oh, us. That that's why we're we're in it. <laughs> For the USA, ties were close ever since they became their colony in 1898. The US also had the largest number of overseas Filipinos at over 4 million, most of whom live on the West Coast states like Hawaii and California. They are one of the oldest Asian partners of the US, they have a mutual defense treaty, and they are the largest export partner and second largest import after China. American pop culture dominates much of the youth influence, Hollywood studios love filming there, and Gallup polls have shown that the USA is favored on average by over 90% of the people asked, making it one of the most pro-American countries on the planet. And um, yeah, in terms of that, you know, American soft power, is it still, you know, very dominant in the Philippines currently? Because, you know, China is also focusing on the Philippines, uh, while mainly the, their president trying to court him and, you know, trying to woo him, you know, into their side of things. Because um, I know that there is some sort of geopolitical, uh, you know, dueling between the Americans and the Chinese and, you know, those who are stuck in the middle of all of this political fighting between these two giants, uh, you know, are the nations like the Philippines, uh, Taiwan as well has got its own issues, uh, Korea, or should I say South Korea and, you know, North Korea. 
and them being supported by China and you know all of these political int- intricacies I'm just wondering you know are the general public of the Philippines you know still very supportive and uh, you know liking the United States of America more than they would for, for instance China yeah or maybe you know they just want peace they just want to have in a common understanding with everybody they don't want to really choose sides i'm I'm just wondering where does the public stand nowadays yeah and can you take the conclusion in conclusion if you enter a room full of asians you definitely know who the filipinos are while everyone's so uptight we're the ones singing karaoke and somersaulting you could just feel the energy of a filipino there's a touch of latin flavor with american pop undertones but in the end no matter what island you're immediately considered part of the pinoy family ken you're one of my best friends. I love you, man. I'm so proud of you. Thanks. Stay tuned. Poland is coming up next. Well, guys, that is it. That is it with Geography Now Philippines, uh, made on the YouTube channel Geography Now. Yeah, the Philippines, 7,000 islands, uh, 2,000 of them inhabited, a population of 110 million people. It's amazing, really. But in terms of biodiversity, you know, flora and fauna, very diverse. Uh, the geography of the uh, islands of the different islands the archipelago islands very unique very special you know you, you won't get the same thing twice you know if you go from the extreme northern areas of the country all the way to the south everything is different everything is having its own uniqueness about it and yeah that that's amazing uh, and the fact that you know, there's even an, a semi-autonomous region within the Philippines, which I also find quite interesting, you know. Uh, how did that come about, exactly? Um, and is there still, you know, a synergy between the central government and that autonomous region? You know, is there still some sort of unity uh, that, you know, that they respect each other and that, you know, they know that this is the Philippines? Uh, even if they do have like a separate autonomous region, they are still part of the Philippines. I'm just wondering about that. You know, the political uh, standing of that region uh, when it comes to the national government. Yeah. Um, but what concerned me a bit was that there was about, how many did you say? 10, 10.4 million uh, Filipino uh, citizens are working abroad or have left the country that's a lot of people that is a lot of people um, I'm just trying to ascertain why are so many Filipinos you know going abroad to work and not really working in the Philippines you know um, I, I don't know the reasons um, hopefully you guys in the comment section you guys can tell me uh, you know, like, why is there so many people uh, leaving the Philippines to work abroad? Um, I'm sure they'll come back, right? They do come back, a lot of them do come back, but, you know, it really is unique that there's so many people leaving. Um, and, yeah, the situation in terms of the Spratly Islands, you know, that, that region of, of the sea that... Uh, is contested by China, by the Philippines, by uh, Brunei, by Malaysia, uh, and Taiwan as well, and you know all these other nations there. Yeah, that like I've said before, that's a hot potato <laughs> that needs to be, uh, you know, cooled down. I don't know how, I don't know when, I don't know who's going to do what, but you know, there's got to be a solution to that situation there uh, because we don't want to have conflicts in that part of the world you know uh, major trade comes from all those various nations going across the entire world so if there's going to be a conflict in that part of the world and there's going to be a conflict in that ocean 
or that sea it's really going to be a problem for the rest of the world as well so hopefully one day you know they can find peace they can find understanding uh, all the various nations and they can share you know instead of hoarding and building islands china i'm looking at you <laughs> um yeah and yeah like i've said before you know all these seven thousand islands they all have their own uniqueness about them uh there are some that look very alien looking you know uh, like you wouldn't necessarily believe that this is earth like it's some other planet uh orbiting another star you know uh, some of the landscapes they were very beautiful and just very alien looking um and yeah people there are very unique as well with all the different linguistics uh the the different ethnic groups as well yeah um, the all representing each other uh you know having complete trust in who they are and you know representing who they are and also believing in the nation that is the philippines which is also very important like i was discussing about uh how does the central government control such a vast and complicated territory you know it's like seven thousand uh islands and you know we'll further explain to us that you know they have a road network system that connects from the south uh, from the north all the way to the south and you know they also have airports major airports that also connect the country so it's very important having that road infrastructure having that um, air infrastructure and uh, i'm also assuming you know the telecommunications infrastructure as well you know all of these things are very important for a nation uh, to continue to exist as a nation and the fact that they've invested so much of their uh, finance all of the resources in building this road network uh, air network and whatever else is very very good and very important uh, that is one thing that they should always applaud themselves for uh, because there are many nations out there that don't really focus much on you know connecting the different areas of their country they rather focus all of their attention and money and power and political power on their capital city or other major financial centers and they don't really focus on building and spreading the infrastructure throughout the entire country so what the philippines has done here is splendid truly truly this is something that they should always remember as a success story um and yeah guys this was good this was really really good Remember guys, if you guys want to check out the original video as well as Geography Now's YouTube channel, the links are in the description below. If you like my reaction, please give me a like, comment and subscribe to my channel. Click on the notification bell if you want to be up to date with my latest videos. And I will see you guys next time. Oh yes, thank you uh, Jacqueline Hernandez for requesting that I should react to this video. It's been really informative. Thank you. Okay guys, good night.